in the south. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about this game, huh? Yeah? Dive on in. It seemed good. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Ever Space 2 Rocket Machine stream. We have finally launched into the beta! Yeah! yeah. Oh, fantastic! Who am I? I'm your host, I'm your guide, I'm the community ambassador, Eric Schrader! Oh my gosh, that means I'm your servant, basically. So, whatever it is that you need in the community, I'm gonna help try and provide. Well, I'm also busy working behind the scenes, helping out the development of Everspace 2 as well. That's right, not only am I a community manager, I am also on the development team. So, it's not like some wonky bridge where it's like you have this head guy who says, oh yeah, your voice is important to me. I know freaking what's up. I know what's going on. And I can help bridge that gap if you've got questions and concerns yourself. That's why I do this. Because I love it. I love you. And it's freaking hype. Beta. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. All right, so. <laughs> I am uh, going to start from scratch here. We're going to start straight from the opening segments of the beta. And you should be able to pinpoint some of the modifications and the changes uh, that are up since the alpha. I am running the live beta build as of this morning. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna get right up in it. It should be a lot of fun. Do I, wait, I have voice warp? Oh my goodness, my voice warp. I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh my, so every single person is now never taking me seriously again. I now, I now understand that. Can we do a do-over? Is that possible? Don't, I must have, I must have bumped a button, okay? You know what, you're welcome, internet. Every now and then we need a moment that just transforms our lives and show us there are other human people out there, other human developers, but they try to get all their, all their T's crossed, all their I's dotted, and then this happens. You know what? I'm glad that we're being as authentic as possible for you guys, so you know exactly what we're going through. Oh my goodness. That, truly that was actually an error. Okay, I know, I know that I pulled some stuff. That was legitimately, I am so sorry. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> wow. Let's talk about some of the changes straight out of the gate. I think a lot of you have been asking about patch notes. You didn't know where to find them. There's like this really large internet. So let's just cut to the chase and let's talk about those elements just really briefly um, so that you can uh, at the very least take me seriously in some degree or capacity. All right, so let's go through this. We have, um, we have added a lot of functional instruments to the cockpit of the ships themselves. You guys have seen me doing this in the live streams after the initial uh, alpha release, but now that's accessible to you guys. So when you go to cockpit view, your dash, you can disable all of the external UI and you can run using the cockpit elements themselves, uh, the instruments, and uh, it works, works perfectly. Maybe not flawlessly, we're still tweaking and modifying some things, but we are absolutely getting it there. We have added the outlaw detonator drone and the outlaw ravager to certain spawn tables. You will start seeing them and they are going to be nasties especially those detonator drones. Um, I know that I haven't shown them off in a crazy capacity, but they can go silent and sneak up on you. So be mindful sneaking around those little asteroids that you think are just full of a bunch of resources. Elite enemies. This is also something we've shown in stream. A lot of what I'm talking about here, we've either shown or uh, otherwise talked about in some degree or capacity. But just note that this is now accessible, okay? That's why we're covering this. Elite enemy types, absolutely crazy. Um, there are variations of the prior enemies that you've seen, much like you've encountered in Everspace 1, but with a twist. Elite enemies have a couple new added properties to them, and we're not done looking into that realm yet. So keep your eyes peeled for the addition of other types of enemies that can spawn in into the game of Everspace 2. We will talk more about that in the future. We also have a lot more points of interest that have varying degrees of puzzles that you can solve as well. So you're not just going to a site and it's like, oh, you know, you just have a bunch of enemies and resources to mine and then you go to the next one. Enemies, resources to mine, next one. Enemies, resources to mine. We actually are giving you objectives. So when you go to a location, there is going to be at least one big or larger objective to capitalize on. That could be clearing the area of an enemies. It could be uh, discovering all of the cloaked containers, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you a task to perform at the very least 
to kind of check off your list as you're going through it. Next, we have, um, goodness gravy, there's there's a couple of things that I don't want to tell you yet, but it's listed in the notes, so I'm just going to tell you. There's another side mission now. I hope that some people who have already dove into the beta have discovered it. I'm curious as to how you guys conclude that mission. Maybe we'll get to it in the stream. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but uh, very pleased with the results. We have visible lateral thrusters now on all of the player ships. This was a process that you have probably seen through development and through our streams as well. Like some of the ships I was flying, they had some of it. Some of them, they didn't. Now it's across the board. So all of your player ships, um, those medium class ships have the lateral thrusters. There's more loot. There's uh, the option to track resources needed for perks, um, as well as tracking challenges. Uh, new player ship models on the body. We also discussed that, and I think it was even the last stream, a lot more detail. More detail, more polish, more tweaking, all of this stuff. Improved story campaign, which we'll begin to in a moment. Improved boss fight, story dialogue, lighting effects, environmental 3D assets, home base locations completely been redone. Uh, item management has been tweaked and adjusted and modified and improved. Uh, we added new ship devices. Um, no, wait, that's lied. We improved ship devices. <laughs> We haven't added new ones yet. We're working on it. Mm. Balancing, um, especially the difficulty curve. I know a lot of you guys were shouting that like, oh my gosh, Eric's doing these live streams and the game's so easy. Who would possibly have a challenge in this? A couple things to point, like we're starting at like level one, going to level 10, right? So there's something to be said about that in and of itself. Still, we are upping that difficulty curve so that you are getting a greater challenge out of it, therefore more satisfaction. Let's see, what else? Goodness gravy, we just, it keeps going on. Um, improved sound effects and music tracks. I did get a report from one Linux user right before the stream claiming that the sound is no longer working. We will be investigating that. So if there are any other Linux users out there watching right now and you're like, help, the audio died. We're looking into it. I will have a follow-up probably either later today or on Monday. We'll see what we can do. So we'll, we'll check that out. Um, let's see. You can store two additional ships at your home base. My gosh, um, devices. Um, this was a this was a really big request, really popular request from you guys. You were like, I don't like having to choose the top first device option, then the second one, then the third one. So we killed it. Now you can choose specifically which one you want to go for. Oh, please, no, calm down. It's not. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, all right, cool. Uh, then we also made sure to um, improve the HUD. A lot of tweaks there, a lot of improvements to that. And there's still more coming. We are not done with the HUD. We are not done with the UI. Um, I want to be clear in that as well, though. We aren't planning on doing like this super massive, incredible overhaul. Um, I know that some people have maybe alluded to more than, uh, than what's actually in the vision of the game. So we are planning on keeping things fairly close to where they're at now, but it's going to be more transparent for you to understand. Uh, and how to navigate those menus. And the menu navigation's gonna receive a bit of an overhaul though, so there's truth in that. Um, but it's not like we're completely changing all of the assets and how the visuals look of those menus themselves. So note that we are still diving straight into that realm and uh, producing more quality features for you. Then, oh my gosh, then the additional graphic settings, the field of view slider, which you've seen, the gamma, V-Sync, motion blur, chromatic aberration, SSGI, damage numbers, HUD elements, all of those things I've been kind of hinting at and showing on the streams, all of those are plugged in. Now you can adjust those to your liking as well. You can play in full screen mode um, where it was a really bad bug where if you alt tabbed, it would just completely kill the game. That's been resolved. Um, let's see, goodness. There were additional crashes when loading save games and checkpoints, and we have hopefully nullified. I want to put emphasis on hopefully. That's always a challenge. Um, it's going to continue to be a challenge because alpha to beta to early access save games and the flags thereof of being saved within, sometimes that can get a little bit messy, okay? So continue to report uh, anything that you're having trouble with save games. Note that especially through development, we do encourage wiping your save and starting fresh with new um, new spaces to travel into. Like when a start of a beta, we do encourage a fresh start just because it makes sure everything is aligned properly. There's nothing hiding in the background to mess anything up. 
Um, obviously, that is your choice. I'm not forcing you to do so. I'm not your dad, okay? It's fine. Your room can remain a disaster. You don't have to clean it, but it might it might clear your mind a little bit if you do. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what else was there? And then there's a ton of other like little smaller tweaks and bug fixes, and uh, I know that we've also tweaked the movement a little bit as well uh, behind the scenes, just because we know that's been a pretty common complaint in addition. Just a, there's a lot, all right? And I'm sure that we've also added some more delicious, fat, juicy bugs all up into the game waiting to be discovered. Uh, we've been trying to squish them, but you know how that is. It's an, it's They are super evasive. It's incredible. I mean, who would have thought that they had uh, legendary thrusters on them? But we will do our best, and we hope that you will assist us in doing so. So if you are diving into the beta now, if you find anything that needs reported, go straight to the Steam forums for Everspace 2. You're going to see a brand new beta location. Dunk right in, read the important information right there that gives you the rundown on how to report your bugs, and start hacking away at the game. And we'll do what we can to better the experience for you and increase our vision, make it better overall. Yeah. Done and done. Woo! Wow. What a list. What a massive list. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. That is just, we are only just getting started. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you already, like we are, we're already diligently working on past the beta. Okay. We're, we're just getting started. Yeah. Just getting started. So that all being said, let's show you guys what we have adjusted in the beta, I've told you all about it. You're like, that means nothing to me. This is a live stream, not a talkathon. You're right. Absolutely. So let's dive in. New game. Here we go. Approaching extraction area, all miners stay in formation. Women, you take up the rear. Understood. Okay. Scrap. What's wrong? Boosts are jammed. Could need a push. Hey Ben, we've got a clunker back here. Ah, uh, good old G and B engineering. Let's meet near his ship. So I want to point out one quick question I see already. Um, playing with game pan is more hard or not. I mean, it really kind of depends on where you come from as a gamer. If you are a controller gamer, I think that you're gonna be in a pretty good spot with Everspace 2. We've, we have a lot of controller styled gamers on the team as well. And we wanna make sure that we have a really good combination of controls for the controller support as well as mouse and keyboard. So yeah, you're gonna have the crazier precision of your mouse but also know that the controller, it's still being as fluid as possible. We wanna make sure that we're giving you optional control schemes as well to customize that experience to your liking. And that is still going to be something we move in through the works to optimize and make better. So yeah, as of right now, I would say they're on par one with one another. I'm a mouse and keyboard gamer myself, but I'm still very comfortable with using a controller. All right, let's go. Any idea what it is? Just a laggy jump drive. There you go. Good as my granny's creaky old knee. Thanks, Ben. I'm nearly out of nanobots. Say, how's your ship holding up? Just the usual wear and tear. Don't tell me you want to run another mobility check. Can't risk you breaking down in the middle of a fight, can I? Well, all right. Knock yourself out. First, show me two nice healthy strafts. Left and right. There. And there. What about your hover thrusts? Man, I can so hear you smile. Isn't it nice to have someone who cares for a change? Now some rolls. One, two. Finally, I need one last strafe with a boost to the right. Actually, this is a really good talking point right in here. So a couple things to point out. Text-to-speech, a lot of you people are either already making comments about it or questioning, uh, is this gonna be in the game? We do have full voice acting in the works for both English and German, as well as the localization for many other languages in the works. Um, and 
we want to make sure that as many people as possible can experience this in their native tongue. So that is a direction that we will be taking. All the text-to-speech is temporary. Might be an Easter egg that you can pull in later, all right? We're, we're, we're just throwing that out there. So again, just, just temporary. Uh, in addition, uh, this section alone, there was a conversation in Discord this week pertaining to how boosting and strafing works. So let's talk about this right now. In Everspace 1, when you boost, your ship goes forward. When you strafe, you move to the left, to the right, up, or down. When you strafe and boost, you move slightly in that direction and also forward. So you'd move like this if you were going to the left and forward, right? Correct? Excellent. In Everspace 2, the boosting is now calibrated to the exact movement you are strafing in. So as an example, when we boost to the right here, we are boosting As literally Rocket, only to the right. Go. I'd give you a four out of nine. Yeah, you're in good enough shape for the junk pile you're floating. Try telling that to Callahan. I bet 10 creds that if we don't catch up, he'll threaten to remove this shift from our tally. Nah, he's a jerk, but not that bad. I take that bet. Also, when we are boosting forward by pushing W, that's how you're going to have your standardized boosting forward movement. If you press W and A, so you would be going forward and left, you would be boosting kind of similar to how you did in the original Everspace, all right? Still, if you're only holding that left and boosting, then you are literally boosting like this. Your ship is moving sideways very quickly. This is a design, a very intentional design decision that we made because the engines and the weapons are now split apart from each other regarding their energy, okay? Or fuel, ammo, whatever you wanna to refer to it as, units, they are split. So now your evasion is far more prominent if you can utilize it in those exact moments for exact directional control. That's how we wanted to lay it out. That's why it's working the way it is. It is very much intended. Let's not keep him waiting then. Say, you already picked a home world? Not yet. Don't know much outside of the DMZ. Once you get your pass, you will need to tell them something. How about Eden 12? Ridiculous name, but I heard they terraformed themselves some decent mountain lakes. Man, I can almost smell the fresh air. Okay, one more answer uh, for a question out there asking about drift. Can you speed and you drift? Not in this build. Okay, well, calm down. It's okay. It's, it's fine. It's all right. Okay, we are working on that. We have received that request a lot. We will have an inertia dampener toggle for you so that you can drift should you desire it very freely. Very much like a space sim. Just remember, this is an arcade styled fast paced shooter. So that drift could be to your disadvantage. Be very careful how you use that. Okay. Well, if it isn't out two slackers, five seconds longer and I would have removed this shift from your tally. What's the situation? There's a Hydra infestation clogging up the entrance, and since you're the one that gets paid for handling these things, I thought I'd let you earn your creds. I'm on it. So some of you um, individuals coming back from stream after stream have already identified some changes to the dialogue, some very subtle ones. We're getting it nice and polished, so nice. we have perfect voice acting the goes in first opportunities the path to the when core. that arrives. The engineer will follow with some distance in case anything needs fixing. How much distance? Enough to make a U-turn should he run into trouble. The rest will wait outside with me until I give the signal. All right, I'm going in. Looks like the last ship never left. Whew. Okay, bunch of ghost ships. That's not foreboding at all. I'd say a group of miners ran into a pack of outlaws, which ended bad for both sides. I wonder how long they've been here. Well, the Hydra had time to spread but haven't devoured them yet. 
So I'd say it happened less than 48 hours ago. Scrap. Might want to consider that you turn. Some of the outlaws might still be alive. Forget Callahan. I can take care of myself. All right. VR is viable. There's a long conversation about VR and why we are choosing not to do it at this time. Um, it's a very, very, very low priority for us, if a priority at all. Um, to be very brief about it, basically, if we go in the VR direction, we are going to put all of our assets and resources and time into that to make it a true VR experience, which would be a separate application. We are not going to add it on as a VR bonus to the game, like we did with Everspace 1. We kind of learned our lesson there. We got a lot of flack for that. We got a lot of criticism. We know better now. So if we go the route of VR, we want to make it the absolute best it can actually be. And to also just ring that idea home, it's not currently something we're pursuing. Like that's a very, that is a very low end goal, if at all. Okay, so I don't want to like make you guys think, oh, they're gonna be really passionate about VR. It's gonna be the best it can possibly be. If, if we do it still low, just I'm reiterating cause it's needed, okay? A very low chance we're gonna do VR for Everspace 2. All right. Whoa. Crystals. One of the fighters seems to have blown the entrance to the core. Let's hope my missiles can blow it back open. Huh? A rogue drone? Whoever sensed that might still be in there. We'll see. So this terminal, this hacking terminal, this is just a placeholder as of right now. This is just a simple hold the mouse, or excuse me, the keyboard button Wait to open. Here. This is going to be one of many little situations that you have seen that will actually have a bit more spunk to it later, shall we say. Until I've had a look inside. Ma'am, please watch yourself in there. Finally, my rescue squad. Erm, um, I have no idea who you are. Hey, you're the envy scum. This will take care of you. This is one of the, um, uh, middle ground outlaws. Just a ravager left over from a conflict, apparently, and he's got these little armor plates, which we're gonna blast off and do some decent damage to him. Not too much of a challenge for us. the last one? Huh, a coil gun? Everyone, the risk meter just went way up. There were outlaws here and maybe more on their way. All the more reason to work fast. They could be here any minute. So what? We've still got the armed patrol outside. Let's get to work, people. We got quotas to fill. All right, we're gonna keep going through this, but I also want to give you one more little detail that I may or may not have forgotten to mention. Guys, if you are present and you really want this and you haven't been able to get into the alpha or the beta and you're just like, like maybe impatiently waiting for early access, we're actually doing giveaways during the stream. We're, we're doing three giveaways. So stick around, call on your friends, double up, you know, do all those things that you want to try and accomplish. We will be doing giveaways, three of them, and we will let you know whenever we start that process um, to give you a quick idea on how that's going to work. All you have to do is go to the Discord where we reside, and then you click on an emoji button. That's literally it. Join the Discord now so that our five minute uh, checking, balancing thing doesn't stop you from being able to participate in the Discord so that you can start preparing for that accordingly. That Discord is discord.gg slash rockfishgames. Uh, we showed it on the initial opening thing. I'm sure it's gonna be posted in the chat multiple times. Three giveaways uh, for the beta, and this beta will transform into the early access and then into the full game. So not only will you get access right now, but that will be your full game package at launch in addition. Woo, all right. And Shu, I am trying to watch for you whenever we are ready. Let me know and I'll set up my timer thingy. 
In fact, I need to pop open the timer thingy right now. One second. Oh. I hope you guys are having a really good week. We've had we've had a really remarkable week um, regarding development, regarding launches. Um, everything's really been coming together and it's been a lot through your guys' support. So we really do appreciate that um, and helping get the game to the state where it's truly enjoyable. Uh, sometimes, you know, you feel like you take a couple back steps and then you have to figure out what went wrong. Where do we need to take this now? That really hasn't been hitting us through development. You guys have been liking what you've been seeing. You've been giving us some pretty decent suggestions. We've been incorporating several of those, which you have been seeing in these live streams. So thank you for all of your contributions and making this a pretty fluid process in and of itself. Truly, it's been, uh, it's been a delight to bring that together. I'm almost done here. Thank you for your patience. And then we will get things started. Perfect. All right, so Shu, I'm waiting on you. Just let me know. And we'll make it happen. All right, let's get back into this. I don't like this. That guy was not just some low level grunt. He even had a custom built coil gun. I know. I already placed some sensors in the shaft in case anyone shows up. Good call. And I'm gonna hold on to the coil gun. Let's hope we won't need it. Okay, so this is just a real quick usage of coil gun. Nothing crazy, nothing too uh, insane to see there. Also going to do a little trick here to hopefully produce a little bit better results for the stream. I am seeing that I'm getting a couple frame rate issues. So let's see if that tidies things up. Have an eye on the miners. I don't want any crystals to end up in the wrong pockets. Is it just me, or are the walls shaking? Huh. Could be the dead guy's rescue squad. And if they spotted our patrol outside, they won't <laughs> just come in with medics. Son of a lizard. Alright, I want everyone to stay calm and clear of the walls. I got this. This is a new save. Yep. More miners. They got here first. Don't worry. More ransom booty to line our pockets. Let's reel them in. Keep moving everyone. I'll lock onto them and let my missiles do the rest. Only one left. That's it. Everyone all right? We're okay. Pal, take my last nanobots. You'll need them. My sensors are lighting up. There's more of them coming down the main shaft. Let's take the fast lane and bust through that drill. All right, so a lot of what you're seeing here, um, we are we are stacked right now, as most intro missions generally are in a, an RPG. So you don't just start off with the lamest of things, right? We wanted to give you a little bit of weight starting out. So you start off as a level 10 through this opening segment. We're finding a lot of like level fours and whatnot. Intentionally, before you get a grasp on the game, Yes, I am blowing through this. There's like no challenge. That is actually the point. Also note that if you're like, wow, that's really lame. I don't want to have anything to do with it. You can skip the tutorial, okay? I am showing this mostly for the story aspects and the quality of life improvements that we've been making through development. So just know, even though this is a work in progress, that is something we've already been considering, something we're already taking a great note of. Excellent. Best. That patrol better be doing their job out there. I mostly say that for this next segment coming up, especially. All right. <laughs> They're slaughtering the escort. God damn it. You all try to slip past. I'll keep him busy. So this is really meant to give you a firm grasp of your movement of your ship. More of them. You know, boosting, strafing, firing your weapons, utilizing it to the best effects possible without really being in too much danger. 
Like, if you died here, that would actually be impressive. <laughs> My engine's overheating. I can't jump. You'll fix it. See you at my base. Hey, you can't just leave me here. Sorry, Ben. How long till you can jump again? Engine's too hot. First it needs to cool down. I'll buy you some time. Nice little practice with the larger target. Nothing too crazy again to show you what's up and how movement operates and a little taste of some of the moderate challenges that you'll inevitably face. These spiders are the real deal though. Focus them down so we can progress that story. How's your shit? Cool down yet? No, it's still heating up. Oh scrap. Scrap, 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 scrap. Oh poor Ben. What's happening? The engine's burning. And now it's moving all the way up to the cockpit. Use the extinguisher. Reduce oxygen. You got this. I got this. I got this. Excellent. So Ben's not doing great at all. <laughs> but we're buying him time. Buying everybody time. Trying to take on these guys. Oh, oh no. Uh, uh, uh. Ben? I'm burning for soul's sake. Hold on tight. I'm on my way. Alright, now we actually have to help him out. Dialogue is funny. Text to speech does that a little bit. I think it's gonna feel a bit more um natural when there's a human voice behind it. Almost there. Ben, are you okay? What the hell was that? All systems are down. checkup on what I might know. Where did they grab you? Your outfit looks like g and work crew. You guessed it. The guys here <laughs> got no style. Bunch of amateurs. They'll be looking to get the best price for you. So given your professional opinion, you know a lot about outlaws. Hell, I know a lot more than they'll ever get from me. You hear me? Newcomer. Where's my friend? Where's my buddy E9? He's in the bed bay. For now, maybe he'll live long enough to fetch a good price. Your DNA scan will show that you are a military clone pilot. I thought they were all gone after the war. I wonder what your face value is. What if I broadcast your profile? That would be a bad idea. You may not like who will come looking for me. Why would I heed advice from a clone? I know my business. Interesting. Yeah, the kind you want me dead. Power outage. The force field is down. This is our chance. Let's try to pry the door open. Help me, grab the door. way to the hangar. Wait! I'm not leaving without my friend. Don't be an idiot. He's a dead man. Okay, get your friend, but hurry. Hey, be nice. Uh, what's happening? It's our chance to get out of here. Come on. Uh, forget it, man. I'm done for. No way. I'm getting you home.
We're here. Let's go. I might have more luck with a clone pilot on my side. All right. A little bit more. Hang on. Watch out. You may call this a warning shot. Attackers are advised to disengage at once. It's the damn Colonials. We'd better stick together if we want to make it out of this alive. Get ready to jump. No dies. Our drives are jammed. There's a jump suppressor down there. We dealt with those before. All right, and we're right back in. So you got a pretty good look at it. Yes, Dax, I certainly do. We showed you a pretty big cut of what the true voice acting will sound like uh, once it's all been incorporated into the game. That first cutscene did have some pretty strong voice acting talent in there, and you can expect that quality to be going through the entire game. Now, that's still not final, what we showed you. Like, there's still gonna be modifications. There's gonna be a lot more advancements. Um, it's more all placeholder, really. Um, I say that and it sounds like it's all gonna change, but you kind of know the drill of development. At least I hope you do. Anything and everything can potentially change, but obviously we're also fine tuning to get that narrative centric experience down for you. So you know how things are starting things out as well as how you need to move into all of your future endeavors. And again, much like in a situation where we wanted to give you a taste of what's to come and then truly start you on your adventure. Now we are starting at ground level one with a completely brand new Sentinel that we've hijacked from this outlaw base. And we've got to figure out how to utilize it and optimize our abilities. I'm seeing some people, uh, oh my gosh, we already we already had a giveaway. My goodness, Shu, I completely missed it. Want to give a big shout out to Thrill. <laughs> nice, Shu, fantastic. Beautifully done. So that's giveaway number one. We will have two more giveaways uh, during the course of this stream. I will try to make sure that I get the timer on screen for you guys set up so you know when it is live and going on. There's just a lot to talk about with this game um, and a lot that we have updated, of course, as you can see here. So let's keep going through this mission. Um, a little bit of spoiler territory that we've already discovered, but as many of you do know or can pretty much put together, this is a continuation of the story of Everspace 1. So if you aren't familiar with that and you're already being thrown into, holy cow, I can't believe he's a clone and all this type of stuff, it's okay. Let's just keep going. This isn't my first dance, you know. Right. The military clone thing. Shooting scrap is in your genes. All right. We do have a new auto cannon with us. This is a traditional weapon in the series of Everspace, previously known as a Gatling gun. High rate of fire, crushes whole. It's down. Jumping is still suppressed. My sensors detect two more. Let's find them and get out. Just stay out of view of that cruiser. True. The auto cannon, in particular, is a Man, incredible shot a versus Sorry. any type of armored yeah. foe as well. Uh, we kind of recalibrated how armor works in Everspace 2 versus Everspace 1. So you have three different layers to your opponents. You have shields, armor, and hull, and you have weapons that are ideal versus shields, weapons that are ideal versus armor. The pulse laser is actually ideal versus shields, and the autocannon is ideal versus armor. So we have a nice, simple setup just starting out of the game. Two down. This is our last warning. Scans are being initiated on all units. Hand over the clone. We will find him either way. So I do see a question that says, in the cutscene, they leave station and outlaw ships. That means we can fly those ships. So I think this is a, this is a really great ship. I'm glad that you're being observant and you can identify uh, the variation that it has in the cutscene versus what we are currently flying now. Know that this is work in progress. We needed to plug in something there and it wasn't at the time where we wanted to reveal a new ship 
that hadn't been implemented into the game yet. So just know that that is a temporary cutscene. Uh, there will be more modifications made. We do not have plans where you can look out and see a ship in the game and you be able to fly that. The player ship is incredibly customized and tailored to your specific needs. We are using a modular approach here. So for those of you who went, oh man, I wanted to fly that ship. Trust me, your customization is kind of ridiculous here. So think about an RPG where you go to your character editor and you change your face and your nose and your ears and then your outfit and change the colors and all that type of stuff. It's kind of like that except your spaceship. All right? Cool. Let's keep going. It's you there after. I told the gas mask not to broadcast my profile. Let's finish this and get the hell out. You can't destroy a suppressor. Fly close and hack in. That's the way to go. We've identified you, Mr. Roslin. Oh, snap. I'd suggest you submit your sentinel without struggle. Hold on tight, pal. We're about to enter super light. Oh, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. You okay, Ben? Damn, he passed out. They're tracking us. You need to disconnect your nav. Now. I can't fly blind. Do it. Okay, displays white. Now what? I'll give you some chords. One second. There. See that sweet shiny marker? That's our way out. I've seen clones fight before, but man. Not your first dance. You're a goddamn prima ballerina. What's your name, pal? It's Adam. And that's Ben in the back. He really needs a medic. The only medics out here work for GMB and that's not where you want to be right now. Not with a fleet warrant on your head. Scrap. We were so close to leaving the DMZ. Let me guess. You had one of those colorful GMB retirement plans. Yeah. Well, plans are for fools, my friend. I'm Dax, by the way. Let's. Haven't been back in a while. Let's hope that the old rust pile hasn't fallen apart. Excellent. So, as one of the elements that I discussed, the home base location in the beta has been completely readjusted. Now you have a little bit more vibrancy to the asteroid contents around, so you can be rewarded through your exploration there, through common resources. Um, but there is also a secret location, two secret locations in this area. I encourage you to explore that, find them out. Yeah, I know, I cut off the dialogue, I'm sorry. I was going too fast. Gotta go fast, all right? We wanna get to this home base. We wanna see more content, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Adam, Dax and the severely wounded Ben arrive on an abandoned military outpost which was once Dax's hideout. Dax guides Adam through the base to the bridge. There, they realize that there is a problem with the main reactor which needs to be repaired. Dax explains that they can place the wounded Ben in a cryopod for the meantime. While carrying Ben to the medical bay, they discuss what needs to be done with the base. The cryopod will hold Ben until they can find power and medical supplies to cure him. Adam insists on knowing more about Dax's background and long-term plans. Dax, however, asks Adam to be more patient and trusting and promises that more information will come. Adam, although suspicious, realizes he has few people he can count on. So obviously that was all placeholder text, but it gets you in the know for A the story. A lot of stuff needs fixing, but we're still good on resources to patch up our ships or refill our ammo should things go south. There's also some space in the storage unit, so feel free to dump your cargo whenever it's getting cramped in that sentinel. What about the generator? Here's the list of what we need to fix it. Scrap metal, a cooling unit. All pretty straightforward. The cooling unit could be a problem. Check out the nearby debris field. That's your best shot at finding one. By the way, I took the liberty of installing two devices into your ship, an EMP generator and an energized boost. Huh, that might come in handy. Thanks. So we are given some devices. These devices should be very obvious for any veteran of Everspace One. And uh, just to speed things along, instead of you reading all of this, basically they are, um, they are timed uses that you can use. They don't cost any energy at all. They're just on timers. You use them for an added benefit for a short period of time. Um, and yeah, they're pretty nice. They're pretty versatile too. You can combine them and synergize certain devices um, so that you can be a very powerful force in certain regards. 
uh, especially depending on what type of ship you're flying, because they have specials and passives and ultimates that could be utilized depending on how you're utilizing your devices as well. There's a lot of different ways that you can bring a build together in Everspace 2. Woo! Will the transition to hyperspace be seamless in the final build? That's gonna depend on what type of computer you have. But we want to make the game as accessible as possible. Um, we're pretty happy with how optimization is coming along. Some of you who were um, within the alpha and dove into the beta probably noticed a jump in performance. At least we hope you did. If you didn't, please report that to the Steam forum so we can look into it accordingly. But we are continuing our development and optimization is absolutely one of the highest priorities for us. We wanna make sure that you have a, the smoothest experience as possible, right? Because What's the point of making a fast-paced looter shooter if you're operating at two frames per second? There's there's none. That's that's the answer. <laughs> so know that we are pushing for as many seamless transitions and uh, 60 frames, you know, in, in all regards. We'll have more details about the requirements of the game at a later point in time, um, but I know that we've posted some thoughts on it um, in recent uh, forums like with PC Gamer, we had a, a, a long AMA over there, so I encourage you to check that content out. I'm sure individuals in the chat will be like, oh yeah, this is what the details were. So, yeah. Sweet. But don't think you can't run the game if you didn't get a hold of a 380. It's <laughs> it's not going to be that demanding. Woo! All right. Okay, so now we have to go collect some stuff. We are in a location called home because it's literally, it's it was a base that was just vacant here and uh, Dax directed us towards it. So now we have to go patch it up. So we need to get some goods out here to get us going. I see some crystal way off in the distance. So let's head over here first. 60 screams internally at 165 Hertz monitor. Hey, you know what? If you've got the settings and you want to tweak things, you absolutely can maximize that. I'm talking about our standard. We hope that when you dive in, you're at least getting a 60 frames per second quality game, right? We, we're we not going to say like the minimum thing's going to be 144 because shoot, then you are going to have to have some, <laughs> you're going to have to have something in your computer there, okay? All right. I didn't find a single crystal in here. What's up with that? Ah, I call shenanigans. Who designed this game? Here we are. I reckon GMB didn't know you were a clone. No. Just ate more chips and they would have paid me a ticket to Eden 12. Eden 12? Huh? That's one ridiculous name. They have lakes there. Cool. I dig lakes. When I was a kid, my old man used to take me kayaking almost Kayak. every day. That was on Byron 4. Just before the whole place went to hell. What's cut? Hacking. You serious? <laughs> Scrap. We've got a visitor. Leave them to me. You could try one of your devices on him. In the meantime, I'll put the hangar on lockdown. What do you think you're doing here? Rodia is out of. Alright, so we got an outlaw scout coming in. Nothing too crazy. This is our first actual one on one battle in the game at this point. A nice, focused. Both level one. Nothing too crazy, really, right? Yeah. There. Really easy. Alone again. He must have detected us when we reactivated the hangar. So, about kayaking. Kayaking. Best thing ever. Say, they never told a soldier grunts how you clones worked. But I heard they gave you fake memories to keep you motivated while fighting. If kayaking isn't in there, someone clearly didn't do their job right. My memories aren't fake. They used to belong to my clone father and every incarnation that came before me. They were transferred to me right before they died. Holy. You're some kind of wandering immortal soul. Well, not anymore. The cycle was broken. So this time, when I die, I'm done. You know what I would do if I were you? No. What? Not croak before I've learned kayaking. <laughs> so you can see we've added a bit of dialogue here that also ties directly into the lore. Again, your veterans out there, those those veterans of Everspace One, you already knew a lot of these tidbits. For those of you who are entering into Everspace for the very first time, now you got the drop, you got the details 
on Adam, or rather this clone of Adam, why he has the memories he has and why he doesn't know what kayaking is. How dare he? <laughs> ha ha ha. I really mean it. If I ever get the chance, I will. All right, so now we need to look for a little bit more, more Artem crystal Make and more sure raiders. Make sure the area is cleared before you head back. Don't want anyone to kiss this base and tell. We're gonna head over here. We're gonna just do some casual exploration. Wait, so I'm missing a conversation here. I want to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, yeah. Nope, everything's caught up. I know the focus is on fighter craft, but will there be any ships that are slightly larger, more trade focused? Uh, Shodan Cat, I think this is a, a, I think this is a strong question. A lot of people are looking at this game saying, "I want it to be a freelancer. I want it to be that, right?" And I, I don't blame the audience because we haven't had something of that nature in a really long time. Nothing that's really stepped up to the plate in that quality experience. Now I want you to know that we are influenced by Freelancer. And there are traits and abilities within this game that will very much hearken to that, all right? But we are not the next Freelancer, okay? Inspired by is by no means we are copying and recreating, okay? That being said, we are going to have certain tools and abilities within the game that put an emphasis on trading, but trading is never gonna be the be all end all way that we would want you to play the game. Again, the main genre point of Everspace 2 is that it's an open world RPG, fast paced looter shooter, okay? Fast paced looter shooter. So the focus is on that action oriented arcadey gameplay um, routine where you're in a fighter ship and you are blowing other stuff up. Still, we do have some larger ships that you will be able to pilot. They are known as heavies. You might be familiar with one from Everspace 1 known as the gunship. It will definitely be returning. We also have lighter fighters too, if you want to be more evasive, maybe a little bit um, uh, stealthy in your approaches and whatnot. Of course, you're going to be made of paper, so you'll have to take a great degree of care in your uh, evasiveness. But we are spanning the range of different types of fighters for you to embrace that arcadey looter shooter mechanic overall. A good question. A really good question, and I'm glad we can clarify that during this live stream. It's important. Don't want you guys thinking the game is something that it's not. That would be really bad. <laughs> Diablo in space is a is a pretty good way. Like I know that we've actually described it sometimes, saying it's like a Diablo meets a freelancer experience. Obviously, generalized terms there, but. Um, yeah, we got a little bit of that effect going on. It's gonna be a little careful and sneaking this bit of him out. Nice, that feels good. All right, let's go address these raiders now. We'll use our devices so you can see what's up. We'll use our energized boost here because we're being lazy, why not? Unless they are really far hey, out here. Knockroach was right. We've got new neighbors. Let's give them the tour. And we'll also use our EMP so we can get some information regarding damage. We certainly like making sure you know what's going on the second it's happening. And we are going to have tooltips and pops ups that occur at varying points in the game. Obviously, we're still tweaking of when they specifically pop up. We, um, we don't want it to cut you off of something that you're doing. That would be really embarrassing, wouldn't it? Don't worry, guys. It's on the list. So by using that EMP, we have completely disabled that Weber drone, so our movement was not impeded, which is very important in these close-range situations in combat. There is quite a lot of traffic around here. Boom. Yeah, something must have happened to our cloaking system. Any luck with those resources yet? Checked off everything on the list. Great. Now bring the parts so we can give the generator a whirl. Perfect. Now, as you can also see, like I use the energized boost to get into combat and you're thinking, okay, well, I have to use a device for quick paced movement. Nope, I just showed you. We also have a cruise drive. So when there's nothing nearby, you can just go into that cruise drive and traverse the areas that you're in fairly quickly. This brings back memories. Never thought I'd miss this shabby place. 
So, we've got lights, climate control and access to scans of our near vicinity. Could the scans help me navigate super light again? I can't fly blind forever. Good idea. We can't reconnect our maps, or the colonials would immediately locate our asses. Still tweaking. But with these scans, let's take a look at the map. There. Cedo Outer Rim, Rodeo Orbit and Union Bridge. That's not much. It's enough for now, at least for what we need to do next. I need you to fly to all three locations and keep an eye out for little devices we like to call bean bags. Bean bags? Or beanies. They're small DIY signal distractors and should have kept this base off enemy radars. You know, if we were to fix Ben, he could easily repair them. No time. We're lit like a bonfire. If we don't figure out what's wrong with the distractors now, there may not be a Ben in the long run. Tend to the bean bags and make us vanish. That will give us time to figure out what to do about your friend. All right, so we're getting a lot of information all at once pertaining to the map and how we navigate it. We're in an unknown region as of right now. We can scroll out and see that there are a lot of different solar systems or sectors, if you will, uh, that we are designing for the full game. These are handcrafted locations. We also have a giveaway in less than five minutes. What? That's right, I said there's a giveaway in less than five minutes, okay? Yes. So make sure that you're getting over to the Discord, getting prepped and ready to go and clicking on a single button to put your name into that giveaway chance definitely definitely good i'll try to remember to even put the timer up on the screen so that you know when it goes live until it goes to full completion all right so what did we learn about our home base we learned that we're actually on the radar and we don't want to be this thing is lit like a bonfire as dax said so our mission now is to go out and find what are called bean bags re-enable them and it's going to scatter our position for any outlaws maybe colonials seeking us out anything like that so that we are in the clear perfect we got another observation question here we go i've pretty much given up searching for some fast-paced player skill-based shooter where you farm reputations to unlock interesting gameplay changing equipment okay that's fine everspace 2 almost looks like that I was looking for that uh, for more than 10 years. You know, that's fine. I'm glad that you've decided and have figured out what you are looking for. I think that's huge. I think as gamers, it's important for us to understand what takes our fancy, right? Um, Everspace 2 very much has a lot of those things that you did mention. And um, there's a lot more added on top of that, including with the itemization we haven't gotten too deep into yet. Um, we still have a lot of more perks. We have a lot of characters through the perks that you're gonna be meeting. It's very story centric for about 20 to 30 hours of the game, in fact. And then from there, you can branch off and go do your own thing. So if you are into more of those narrative style games, there's still an opportunity here that you might be, uh, that you might be surprised by, that we are still directing towards. But otherwise, again, I'm glad that you know what you want. That's great. I'm glad that you're deciding that now as opposed to buying games that you end up not being happy with. So good on you, sir. Okay. Let's go and activate these bean bags and do it. And giveaway beta key is the giveaway, right? Wait, what? Giveaway beta key? Yeah, that's correct. She was it is it live? Is it do I need to put the timer up? Did it start? <laughs> One minute left. Okay, we're just gonna hang out here. Um, actually, no, we're gonna go. <laughs> I'm just so excited. I wanna make sure that you guys know when it's live and how it's going. All right, we could pick up some more Vardom. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna clue in those of you who have access to the beta, just a, another little hidey hole, a little place that gives you something more for your trouble. So if you take the time to explore, you can find little nooks and crannies and places that are gonna help you out. Like this. You hear that? That tells us we're getting close to a hidden item. Now on the home base, it's pretty easy to find. Like we added a lot of content around it that's brightly lit. So it's like, oh, hey, there's something right there. That was intentionally designed and you get your free little sticky turret and a little bit of creds just to start things off if you take the time to do it. Super duper, also some part of crystal. And like I said, there's, there's gonna be a lot of little locations like that that allow you to see uh, what's going on 
and um, all that stuff. So, all right, there's a timer on the screen. That means the giveaway is live. That's right. So you have five minutes to get on into the Discord and click a button to be put into a pool to win a beta key. That's all it takes. And I do hope that you also stick around in the Discord. We actually have a lot of fun in there and we'll be talking about some of the new gallery shots that people have submitted uh, earlier this week. All right, so let's go ahead and jump around to these bean bags and start activating them to get us off of the radar. Coffee Bonson, is the beta content complete or is it a vertical slice of the full game? The vertical slice, I would argue, is more of the prototype. We are well past the prototype. We are moving into a realm where we need feedback from individuals, and we are doing that through pocketed, closed opportunities. Crystals. The last badge wasn't enough to keep the generator running. They're usually all over the place, but most common around the Cedo outer rim. And we have an early access that's starting at the end of this year. So for anybody who wasn't able to back us through Kickstarter or through other couple means, um, the doors will be opening wide in December so that you can participate in helping fund our development, as well as putting a little bit of yourself into the game by voicing your feedback, your concerns, your suggestions, so that we can work together and make this the best it can possibly be. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Adam, for listening in. Excellent. Zenday, question. While flying through atmosphere on surface, will we see occasionally engine exhaust rails? I think that would be pretty cool. It's certainly not currently implemented. We'll have to see what we can do. I know that we do like to add some pretty neat details, hence the lateral thrusters. I think that was a really nice addition, a community suggestion, by the way. So we will, we'll see. We'll see, that seems, I, I like that suggestion. So here's a very large explorable area. We've got a massive ship, convoy, station. What is it? I don't know. I've never played this game before. And um, a lot of debris to kind of cycle through and throw out of your way to procure all of the goods left behind. we take out a couple more of these outlaws and then we'll finish up this mission. I do want to try and push these missions through a little bit. Because I know, I know that uh, the bulk of these you, you guys have seen before, and that's okay. For those of you who haven't, I do hope that you enjoy everything that we've been working on. Beautiful. What's that? Credits! I'll take them. Show us some space bugs. Technically, we've shown you a couple seen the found one of the hydras demons. looks like an asteroid bumped off half of its antennas maybe we're lucky and they got caught up somewhere hey try running a scan to simulate the crash what do you think i just did smart man there's one if the joints are up for it you don't have to be a quark mechanic to reattach them Grappling, yes, yeah. You can grapple things with your ship. What do you mean that's uncommon in a space game? I think it's pretty cool. There you go. First hard fix. There's gonna be a lot of different ways that you can utilize the grapple mechanic as well. And there's the other one. A lot of which hasn't quite been implemented into the game yet. But just note that we've been having a lot of fun grappling drones and tossing them into asteroids. <laughs> okay, now how to activate it? Just fly close and charge the link. Oh, whoops. I gotta activate it. Gotta activate it, boys. All right, there we go. The music is generated. So, uh, Giho is our sound designer, and he's been doing all the music and all the sound effects. And um, I'm gonna describe the music as a dynamic system. It's probably not the proper term, but hear me out here. Basically, different tracks can play as you're in certain locations. And that track is layered. So when a combat sequence initiates, it layers onto the track that is currently playing instead of changing to a combat track. This is completely different from the way that it was in Everspace 1, which was rather changing tracks 
um, here it's adding layers onto it. So it has a really nice First uh, combat feel Excellent. where everything starts getting Before a little bit more hot and heavy to have more. to deal with. Oh, that's our giveaway completion. Who's the lucky winner on the Discord? I need to know right now. Who is who is celebrating their winning of a beta key for Everspace 2? Give me the deets. Who is it? Who be it? Shoo, it says it's done. It is Quattro 44. Yeah. Impressive. So would that be 1616? Because it's because it's quattro, whatever. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Everybody, just ignore that terrible joke. Gosh, let's play the video game. Um, here we go. We are going to travel to the next location. Nice and simple. Actually, wait. No, we need to look for Vardom crystal shards. That's what we were doing. So we are going to fly over to this side. I think there's some Vardom crystal for us to grab. I hope. I think that's right. But yes, congrats! Quattro 44, yes, here we are. A nice big handful of Artem Crystal where we just we shoot to loot. And we'll get them to you shortly. Thanks. Now. And I know somebody out there is like, wow, you just shoot and loot? That's really dumb. That's really boring. Congratulations, Rockfish, you played yourself. Nobody wants to play a boring game where you just shoot and loot. Okay, well, besides the fact that it's a shooter looter, uh, or a looter shooter. Um, I also want to point out that we are not done with the exploration of obtaining resources in any degree or capacity. Much like the hacking was addressed in that tutorial, we are also looking to give you an opportunity if you bring the right tools to the right situation, including mini games regarding your resources, much like mini games will be added to hacking. So there will be more on that in the future. It's simply not ready yet to really break down and talk about in the beta state, but Come to early access, there will be a lot more to discuss, a lot more to share regarding those features too. We don't want you to just be a skilled fighter pilot only. We do want to give you some benefit to putting emphasis in other realms uh, of the game. So mining has some opportunities, some merit there. Why are they called bean bags? Because they make our station's map indicator jump around on a map like bean bags in a juggle. They will show up all over the place, but never where we actually are. Keeps the crowd guessing and is safe. Oh, what a nice, easygoing system to explore when you're first entering into the game. Nothing too violent, yet. I see you've headed to the rim. If you need better tech, there used to be this trader around. Any sign of the beanbag so far? Don't know. I got this marker jumping around on my display though. Could be it. Try to follow it and keep me posted. Oh, wonderful. We have an alt. So let's talk about alts just very briefly. Basically, there are multiple subclasses in the game of Everspace 2. At the moment, we have three classes. Actually, let's take it one step back further. In the beta, we have one class and we have three subclasses. And each subclass has a different alt. The Sentinel that we are flying right here has an electrical overcharge alt that basically zaps everything like the lightning gun from Everspace 1. This is always bound to the Sentinel. You pick up a Sentinel, that will be its alt, 100% of the time. If you don't like that alt, I recommend a different subclass. Between the subclasses, there's not a crazy number of changes, but you will see modifications thereof that give you a benefit to using certain elements of gameplay versus others, like certain devices, certain equipment, certain passives, stuff like that. Um, but ultimately they're going to be fairly similar across the board. So all of that would be under like your medium ship class, as opposed to your light ship class, which those subclasses, they're going to be a little bit more similar to one another, but they'll also have their own unique alts as well as the heavies. Those split out to three different subclasses, etc., etc. You kind of, you kind of get what I'm saying. I hope. Will it really be called alt? We want to make sure that you understand what it is and what it does. We did explore this actually. This was an internal, I'm gonna call it debate. <laughs> Cause we wanted to call it a lot of other things. And at the end of the day, if we call it a bunch of other things, you know, we 
want to respect the intelligence of players, okay? We absolutely do, but we also need to cater to newcomers. We also need to cater to those um, who need just a little bit of a push in the right direction so they can have that formal understanding. So alt is basically a short terminology for the greater uh, terms that we are going to ultimately be giving it here. Just know that that's kind of our mentality as we're approaching. Work in progress, we're keeping it simple. You know exactly what an alt is in every other game. Boom, slapped it on, done, move on. We're addressing act actual content issues, bringing it into the game. Then we'll have our naming conventions and all of that pooling in at another point in time to give it all that flair and lore-centric elements that the game does need. Woo, all right. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and visit this trader since Dax recommends it. And we'll go explore this beanbag. Really digging the music? Good. We're actually pretty happy with how the music's been coming along. We're also pretty happy with the, um, the sound design overall. There's still some areas that we're tweaking and we're criticizing or saying, hey, this needs to be better, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, you know the drill of development. I hope you know the drill of development. So let's keep seeing what we can do. But overall, pretty pleased with the results. Whoop, there oh, we go. Would you look at that? Customer or outlaw? Customer, I guess. But can't you be both? Not here at McLaws. I'm running an honest business. I see. Say, laddie, you look like you could very well handle those outlaws. Are you up for some challenges? Hunting outlaws in a more creative way? Why, I will yes. even throw in some reward for you. What do you say? Let yes, me barely. take a look. Wonderful. So this is where you have Queen obtain your first outlaw hunt challenge. There will be a number of challenges that you will collect throughout the game. This one's a fairly basic one. Again, it's the beginning of the game. Of course, it's going to be basic. We're not going to have you take down 50 ultimate super bosses, right? That wouldn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of these. Let's see. Uh, we also have another new device that we can see here, a corrosion injector. The devices themselves are going to be scattered about not only by certain storefronts that you can obtain for a cost, they're also hidden. So again, if you take your explorative abilities to the next level and you hunt down all of those secret areas in our handcrafted worlds that we're building out you will be rewarded verily i say to thee excellent will bad guys have alts there are certain enemies that have certain abilities which they will utilize i don't know if i would consider them alts per se but um but they're certainly not going to just be ships that fly around and don't do anything except for loop around and shoot you. Text to speech is good enough. Ship it. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're going to have to talk to my boss about that one. I uh, don't think that's going to fly. We're going to use this coil gun instead of the pulse laser because we can. And then we're going to sell this other stuff because I want monies. Now this, this scrap metal... And this Vardom Crystal Shard, you'll notice it's got this green thing on it. What is that? Well, that's tracking your perks. It's telling you this stuff can be used for perks. So don't sell it, please. Hang on to it. You can upgrade. So what does that look like? Well, let's talk about that very briefly. Companion perks. Whenever we level up, whenever we hit level five, we'd actually be able to uh, drop in one of these for free. But on Dax here, we have each one of these being tracked, which I actually find to be slightly annoying. I'm, I just want to track... Um, see, I just want to... Can I, can I untrack this? Can I please? No? No? Is that broken? Perfect. Wonderful. You can adjust which ones you're tracking, which ones you're not tracking. Um, and what that's going to allow you to do is show you when you have items to collect for these perks. I honestly think that we actually broke our untrack feature at the moment. So you have to track them all. Get wrecked, scrub. That's right. Whatever. But you can see in the right, right next to my name, all of these kind of show you if you have all of what you require, the credits right there. If you have partially what you require, the Vardom Crystal Shards right here, or if you don't have anything yet, like the anti-grab module and the iron, which you still have to seek out and use. But once you distribute all of those goods, you can upgrade this particular perk. And this one, for example, would give you an increased tractor beam range to 800 meters. 
All of these are gonna be static perks delivered to you from various companions to open up new doors and new opportunities throughout the game as you progress the story. Wonderful. All right, let's see what else. Actually, I might be able to, let me let me try this really quick. I just, I'm curious. I think I can, yeah. So it's at a station where that doesn't work. We are live reporting bugs. Isn't that incredible? Oh my gosh, fantastic. Did I mention it's a work in progress? But don't you worry guys, this is all part of the game. And these settings are also come from you guys, by the way, like you wanted to make sure you're not selling stuff that is vital for perks. That's why we did this, like right out of the gate. I'm trying to sell all this stuff and I stopped when I got the scrap metal because I knew I needed it for the perks. Successful implementation is successful. That's the ultimate goal there. So we will continue moving forward to make sure those things are working as intended and all that jazz. Is the distractor hidden in a giant ship wreck surrounded by mines? I do remember a wreck but it's been a while since we hit these out there. I was really hoping that they would go flying into the uh, minefield. Let's see if they'll fly right into it. Oh yes, they will, good. No, they're past it. Dang it. I was hopeful. Now, leveling up does give you some generic stat increases every time. There are noteworthy um, elements when you level up, like your upgrade tokens. So let's go ahead and talk about those very briefly. What is an upgrade token and what does that allow me to do? So as you can see, we've got these two devices that were given to us from Dax at the very start of the game. We have this EMP generator, we have this energized boost. I want to do more with it. I want to change the way that we utilize this. As you saw, I used that energized boost to directly get me into combat. That's the way that I like to play the game. Can I change this to benefit me even more? The answer is actually yes. So here, what we're gonna do is we are going to move down to this high pressure and we're going to unlock it. So using that upgrade token, we have enabled the energized boost to now also do damage when we collide with our opponents, when we get even close to them. Yes, ramming speed, here we go. I love this. This is like my favorite thing. Don't take this from me. And now we can do that. Upgrade tokens are going to be key in developing your builds for a lot of different devices. I think in the beta, there's currently 10. I don't think we added any new ones, but I think there's 10 devices. Each one of these has three different modes that you can modify it towards. And just putting emphasis on there's gonna be a lot more devices, like a lot more. <laughs> now, where are you? Now here we also have power cores that are floating around. Nice, simple, easy going puzzle solving. You bring it to an energy socket and voila, you have gotten some containers or new stuff. We'll also bring this power core over here. You can also throw them into place. Nice. Let's look at some of the stuff that we got. Nano injector could be really useful. Um. Hey, Rockfish team, can we talk about consumables yet? Is that is that something we can talk about, or is that on the, is that not on the table? I'm curious. <laughs> consumables make their appearance in Everspace Two as of right now, very similarly to that of Everspace One, where you use them. They are gone forever, but they give you some sort of added benefit in that process. One of the big changes that we've done is we've made nanobots into a consumable. Before, it was a resource that you had to go into a pause screen and then click on your repair buttons and go from there. We're still playing around with this idea and uh, seeing what we so can do with consumables the for the future. At least no distractor. It's and really actually I've come up with some pretty good but ideas. Land. So uh, we'll keep you in touch on that in the future. All right, so now we've found the Hydra found. infestation over the top. It's infested with Hydra. And let's just get rid of these bad boys. That could explain the weak signal. Blueberry. All right, ready to activate. 
Second, Second one done. One's up. Nice. One more and the show is on. So we're going to stop back by our base first. To drop off the Vardom Crystal Shards. What's a juggle? Seriously? Man, you obviously never had to endure shift duty. Juggling is about throwing up objects and catching them in quick succession. Over and over. Why? To keep idle minds busy. Plus, there's a lot of profound stuff to be learned along the way. Right. I mean it. Just finish up and once you're back, I'll show you. I think that's great. You can use scrap metal for something else that's selling. Yeah, we haven't dove into the um, the crafting components yet, uh, but just know that we are having some pretty strong conversations uh, about ironing out what that's going to look like and how we're going to be establishing that for you to utilize. So uh, just going to say it again. Crafting is an element of Everspace 2. It's not going to be like this be all end all. You have to do this sort of aspect. Like we don't want it to be that, but we do want to have some added weight to the randomization of the loot, right? It's like, I mean, just in general, you find five random things that are all crappy to you, that sucks. So why not have the means to take those five random things, break them down into components, and then create something that's actually worthwhile to you? Just makes sense in our eyes. We're looking into what that looks like, and we're gonna move forward with something. I'm sure you'll see more in lieu of the early access builds uh, where we can talk more heavily with that crafting system. So for now, just know that that is on the plate. So when you're seeing stuff uh, like wiring kits, super gels, Atheum crystal shards, yeah, it's gonna upgrade your perks. There might be additional uses on top of that. All right, let's go to this home base. Will De Dax teach Adam to jungle in a cutscene? You're silly. Maybe. I can't give away spoilers, okay? Let's see, uh, see a couple more questions. I wanna answer these as well. Where do you make suggestions and report bugs? This is a great question. And I want to make sure that you all know the best spot, we're consolidating everything. So go to the Steam forums. Boom, Steam forums for Everspace 2. It's super simple. You go to Steam, you search for Everspace 2, you click on it, you're there. Just go to the discussions. There's going to be forums for everybody. You can start diving in, talking about your thoughts, your suggestions, your ideas, your crashes, your, you know, whatever's going on. There's also a beta super secret section for those of you who are in the closed beta. I know, holy cow, that's so devious of us to allow those who have supported our cause to get their own secret location on the forums. But truly, make sure that you're utilizing that. We are hearing you loud and clear there. We've already received a lot of great suggestions, a lot of really strong ideas. And we want to utilize that to make this the best experience possible. I am going to be incredibly redundant in saying that. We chose the early access model of the game so that we can work together, all right? So please use it. Please submit everything there so we can have a nice consolidated place and really work together with you, all right? Neat. Space kayak, oh my gosh. Juggling in a kayak. I like these thoughts, actually. You guys... You know what's up. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> I back the game at the 40 euro tier. Think I'm one of the early adopter tier. Is that right? If so, is there any way for me to gain access to the beta or will I need to wait a month for the early access? Early adopter, I believe is beta. So if that's the case, Rob, I would check your email that is associated with your Kickstarter. If you do not see it in there, check your spam folder. Um, a lot of different emails like to take Kickstarter and just put it in the garbage bin. Uh, so make sure you check through that. If you're still having issues after about 24 hours, because like we literally just launched the beta today, okay? It can sometimes take a little bit of time for those keys to get distributed for, you know, a number of different reasons. Um, but if you haven't received your key within 24 hours, I would, I would recommend sending an email to support at rockfishgames.com with your Kickstarter address, your tier, all of those credentials and say, hey, is there any way I can get this key? I haven't seemed to have received it. It's not coming through, blah, blah, blah. Again, would recommend that tomorrow after 24 hours have gone by just in case. Uh, but again, diligence, check all of the emails and the spam filters and everything. Okay, woo. Blue colored crystals are nice. Will there be additional crystal colors? No, we only want to use one crystal color through the entire game. 
there's, there's, no, that's asking for too much. We have all these rich, meaningful sites that are handcrafted. We're only choosing one crystal color. That's it. Don't worry, we got your back. <laughs> we want to make sure that we're keeping things fresh, right? Um, and it's not, we don't want it to also be, it's like, oh, everything in this location is blue. Everything in this location is green. That's also kind of lame. Uh, we are diversif diversifying each of these locations with unique attributes, with unique traits. Some of you have already seen it in Union, where we have a lot more nebulae that you will have to be flying through and dealing with. We also have a gas planet in Union that you'll be dealing with. Uh, and there's more to show in the near future about uh, the diversity between just simple solar systems as well. So yeah, we will absolutely have more than one crystal color, I promise. And I, you know, it's, it's funny I say that, you know, I, go, I want to go in here and point out we have Bartum Crystal and we have Atheum Crystal and they're both blue, okay? So, so I understand why you pulled it up. Like I do, I get it. So, it's great. Don't worry, I'm not making fun of you. I think it is a good question. Just know that we got a lot of work to do. All right. Here's the Verdum. Yeah, about that. It turned out that five of them are enough, but you can use the rest to upgrade the other systems. This station offers quite a few perks if you have the right people on board. Now all we need is to get the bean bags running and we're good. Perfect. All right, so see we want to untrack the outlaw hunt as much as we like knowing what we need i don't want it on the screen anymore it's already starting to annoy me so we're going to just pop that off the screen so it's no longer there we're going to look and see what we have what we can distribute here we're just going to put in the, the credits because we have them we might as well and we got 19 vardom crystal shards out of 35 you know whatever we'll store it there too so you see that it started going up but we still need more when we find more we will collect it Otherwise, we're going to put these other resources over here for now. Um, we're going to add these mines and this rocket launcher to our mix. That seems good. Cool. We'll fly back out, head to the last beanbag, finish up that mission, and maybe give you a taste of a new submission that we've added to the beta. Chu, how are we doing on timing for the next and final giveaway? 200 ammo rocket launcher? Huh, I like it. We need two actually. This is an adaptation of a previous weapon from Everspace One, except in Everspace One, it shot 10 missiles at the same time and they all uh, were heat seeking. Now we give you 200 missiles that you can rapid fire. <laughs> All right, some enemies to take on. Let's do that. And then we'll move over to the bean bag. Our coil gun sure does use a lot of energy. I'm hoping that we find a new energy core soon. If not, I'm gonna have to buy one. Nice. All right. Okay, let's see. If, let's see if we can be cheeky with one of these mines. Yeah, that feels good. That feels pretty good. Taking a mine and throwing it at your opponent. I am satisfied with that. All right. Let's head over to the speed back now. Whoop. Only the ship designs I find to be on the very generic side. I hope there will be some more unique models. Hey, you know what? I think that you are right. I think that this ship is pretty generic. Intentionally done so that players can find a strong starting point to build up from. Because we do want to have a nice assortment of ships that you're going to be pleased to be flying around in the game of Everspace 2. As I have mentioned previously, this is an RPG where we want you to customize and build yourself up in the capacity that you want. Everything I'm cycling through on the screen right now is just a tier one Sentinel. That's it. All of these are technically the exact same ship, but with different styles, different looks, different colors. 
Just one ship. That's it. So if you still think that this is meh, if it's eh, you know what? That's fair. I disagree with you. <laughs> but I hope that you'll see that as you go up in tiers, and also as you change your ship, that you're gonna find some pretty strong aesthetics that are more to your liking. Uh, we're gonna go with this guy, cause you know, why not? Found it. Looks eh, like its we'll power it core fell off. I'll plug it back in. No, keep your uh, distance. Here we go, we'll do Don't this one. until you're ready to take some damage. Oh, whoops, I went in too close. You got it's this. fine. Now, I actually think that this ship has different attributes to it. <laughs> because my mobility seems to have changed slightly. Um, and we, that is intentional, by the way. We do, we are, our thoughts are to have the different pieces, the different modules that make How up your ship. You know it was a trap? Have different attributes and modifiers to them so that you can pursue a unique trait over another simply based on the pieces that make the whole. But we are also looking at an in-game state where you can transmogrify all of your pieces. Um, so for those who aren't, aren't familiar with that term, basically you can choose the aesthetics that you want and you also keep the stats that you want. So we are looking into that. Boom and boom. It's called Stan Vita. Outlaws do that a lot. Besides, bean bags don't run on power cores. Thanks for the heads up anyway. One last charge and I'm done. Grapple mines run only when? <laughs> oh my gosh, Joseph, I love it. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Tempt me, though. That sounds like so much fun. The only problem is we would have to make sure there are mines in every single area for that to work, and that would be... That's that's slightly problematic. Back online. But still, I, I like see it. That. Our base marker is now everywhere but here. Next, I need you to drop by the trading station at Union Bridge. They might have something that could help us fix your friend. Like medical supplies? No, but it will get us there. It's called a Prime Sense STA. Might be a bit costly though. A Prime Sense STA. Got it. Good. And don't forget that for anyone watching, the bean bags are the main act now. That's Excellent. a cozy little juggling gig. No cloud parade, and definitely not a stunt show. After all, there may be a bounty on their heads, so keep your ambitions low. Got it? Laying low is not really my strong suit, but I'll try my best. I really mean it. Talk to you soon. Excellent. So I do see a follow up question um, from Coffee Bo Hansen or Co Coffee Bonson. I don't know how to pronounce your username. There's too many usernames out there. I like it, I just can't say it, I'm sorry. But we're friends, right, I hope? Perfect. Follow-up question is, will there be different design languages, like manufacturers? Some smooth curves, less angular pieces. It might have been a little bit hard because I was cycling through a lot of different options there, but there are, in fact, different uh, manufacturers and, and different types and styles of ships that you will be seeing as well as as they upgrade and there's going to be more to that customization in the future as well so uh, but try not to get too ahead of yourself there because we are still only in the beta just receiving all of that more ships are going to be coming into the future so you'll have a much uh, greater distinction of seeing how the variety works in that sense um, in addition to that regarding the itemization itself You'll have parts and pieces from different manufacturers uh, that will give you varying degrees of bonuses and whatnot. And while that's not aesthetic, I think it is something to point out so that you know we are taking into consideration that there's more than just one manufacturer that exists out in this massive space in the demilitarized zone. Perfect. Space football with mines minigame. Oh my gosh, Bryson. You crazy. I love it. Doing anything for a multi-monitor support. Be nice to have status or inventory open on a second screen. I know that we've been working on widescreen support. And I believe we have we had multi-monitor support with Everspace One. So I want to say yes. Um, I'm gonna need to get confirmation for you, however. Um I'm not sure. Uh, Casper, do you actually know uh, the response to that one? I know Casper's lurking and Twitch, but the question comes from YouTube. I will hook you up if I do get a response. The, the question is one more time uh, for Casper. Um, doing anything for multi-monitor support? That's a great question. Honestly, not sure what our current status is on. Ultra-wide should work. 
I know we're still tweaking ultra wide. Triple monitor support is planned. Okay, so it's being looked into. That's the official response as of right now. Uh, thank you, Casper, for the uh, information. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's going to be coming back because, again, we did have that with Everspace 1. So, um, but yeah, definitely follow up with us about that. I think that's um, I think that's important for a lot of gamers, a lot of players. Now, in regards to moving certain aspects of your UI around, um, as you mentioned, it would be nice to have your status or inventory open on a second screen. I hmm, that's that's a little bit more out of the um, out of the the loop of what I think we would do for multi monitor. I think it would more be a spread of your view as opposed to changing around the UI, that kind of gets into some sticky territories. So just know that it would be more in the direction of creating a wider display as opposed to a customized UX experience, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and dock here and see what goes on. Hi, I'm looking for a Prime Sense STA. That's the pre-war model. It's very rare, but I do have one in stock. I'll buy it then. A please wouldn't hurt. Erm, can I please buy it? How much is it anyway? 4,000. 4,000. And 200, yes. You don't happen to be a contractor, do you? Could be. Why? Because I could pay you, say, 2.5k, if you do a little job for me. All you have to do is deliver a small package to a dear customer of mine. That's all? Will you do it? Sure, why not? That doesn't sound very committed. I would be honored if you let me take this job. Excellent. You will find the package at the abandoned station nearby. I'll give you further instructions once you're there. New mission. The good, the bad, and the decent. This is in fact an entirely new mission that has been set up for the beta. Um, previously we had a placeholder where the guy just straight up gave you the money for this mission because it hadn't been developed yet. He even tells you the mission isn't ready yet, gives you the money, and Adam's like, oh, how very meta of you, thanks. Uh, but it's now here. Beautiful. So we will start doing this a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do this mission. I think we have we have time. So that's good. Um, I also got a response from Will, who is, uh, he does a lot of wonderful things for us. He, um... He helps manage the streams as well, making sure that our content is pretty quality in our displays for you guys. Um, also does a lot for PR. And he's saying that having inventories on a second monitor, that's some EVE Online level overview right there. And he's he's precisely right. We're not trying to make this some like super hyper trading marketing simulator sort of experience. Like again, at the end of the day, Everspace 2 is an open world RPG with very fast paced arcade styled looter shooter mechanics, right? So when we break that all down, our emphasis is going to be on combat and maneuverability. What you want, we want you to have precise controls. We want you to engage and extract some really unique um, powers and synergies through your looting systems and also be rewarded through your exploration and accomplishing varying challenges as you play through the game. That does include jobs and it does include trading but that's not the point, right? So it is encompassing a lot of these different components, but the focus is really on that, the, the genre as a whole, right? Fast paced, arcade, looter shooter mechanics. I demand a 1K discount for the attitude. Oh my gosh, right? Yeah, the guy seems kind of like a jerk now in the actual vocal line, the, the vocal lines, <laughs> and the actual voice work. He's gonna sound like a pretty genuine guy. He just kind of comes across as like, maybe a little crass. Yeah, that's possible. Um, let's dive into this mission. We'll we'll get more of a, a sampling for it, I think. Also, teleporter. Oh, I can't afford that either. Oh, that stinks. If only I wasn't fast tracking these missions and actually going and doing fun stuff. So let's go ahead and go over to this destroyed station. That was previously alive in the prototype. Oh my gosh. That sounds so savage, doesn't it? That station doesn't look abandoned to me. How many are there? Five. 
One of them is a pretty nasty viper. I knew it. Don't let them get away. Oh look, we have an elite outlaw viper now that we have to engage him for this mission. Let's go ahead and try and take him on first. Oh, he, he jumped away. Scallywag. All right, let's ramp. That feels good. I just, I really like that. <laughs> oh! Here, taking damage. Where's our shield at? Oh gosh. Be a little bit more mindful here. Get our devices back up or something. Be okay. We well, kind of been playing in third-person view for a little bit. Let's uh, change things up a little bit more. Almost got him. Cross another one off. Perfection. Got four, but All the right. Viper jumped out. Is the package still there? Now we have to explore this place for a package. Hmm. Can't find it anywhere. What ship types did the group fly? Apart from that elite Viper, there were a scout, two madcaps, and a sniper drone. Just as I thought. I hate those guys. They had pestered me to sell them the wares, but I turned them down. They didn't happen to have left their address, did they? The Viper pilot is at Slayer in Rojo. Let's get this giveaway going right now, right? Is it, are we triggering it now now? Is it now time? Is it going? Is it go time? Giveaway live now, do it. Get on board. We're going. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Shu. Notice us. So much story content. So much this, stuff's going I would be on. Very grateful if you could get my package back. This will cost you. How about a raise up to 3.5k? Sounds fair. I'm on it. Good. Excellent. All right. So now we are. Uh, we've got a continuation of this mission. We've got to fly to a new location entirely. And get this package back. Excellent. The look reminds me so hard in Wipeout. Any race missions I'm coming? So we are including several, um, I'm going to call them mini games, where the player is tasked with accomplishing tasks. <laughs> Imagine that, a task. That's a task. Anyway, the point is, is that um, we want to reward all types of different style of play, right? Um, and that includes maneuverability and your execution of speed. So we do have certain race tracks in the game that if you complete at a certain speed, there will be certain rewards that you can obtain. Um, they're kind of more or less sort of just plugged in right now. There's not really too much of a point to do them other than bragging rights and say, hey, I got... I completed this one in 13 seconds. Oh yeah, well, I completed in 12.5, you know, whatever. Um, but there will be more that comes from that um, and all of that. LAN Co-op asks Tech2C. This is a single player game entirely. All of our focus, all of our emphasis has been making it single player. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking about LAN, you know, that sounds really cool. It's just, it's not in our vision. And I wanna make sure that you understand that our vision is to make this a 20 to 30 hour campaign driven experience as well as the ability to branch away from that you? and do your own thing um in this world that isn't affected by any other players um and there will be persistence involved here too um, some of your decisions will make an impact in various sites and yeah. locations now don't make a fuss so just yeah. return what you stole and i'll let you go never everyone says i am just like everyone else but with this i will prove them wrong i will finally stand out Sorry. Well, snap. Let's get him wrecked. We got those rockets, right? Let's use them. My hull integrity is getting low. Is there a trading station nearby? They can patch me. I warned you. Perfect. By perfect, I mean that was terrible. We took so much damage. 
It's okay. Vardum Paint. Or Viridium Paint, excuse me. Hey, it's me. Did the package contain some Viridium Paint by any chance? Yes, that's it. The recipient is already waiting for you at the outer rim. You know that Viridium products are illegal. I'm sorry, but I'm not paying you so well to ask questions. Point taken. All right, so now we have to deliver this illegal substance known as Viridium Paint. Yeah, Corrosion Missile dealt a bit of damage to us, but uh, we restored ourselves, we had that Nanobot. Are any of the guns in Everspace 2 semi-auto? Yes. Next question. <laughs> I guess, I guess the, the appropriate answer is not really, uh, because, uh, so let, let's, let's, let's break that down a little bit. We have, we don't have any weapon where it's like you press a button and you shoot, you like do a triple shot and then you have to press a button again to do a triple shot. Um, it's basically you hold down the attack button to continually fire your weapon, or you hold down your attack button to charge a weapon up and then deliver a massive strike. Um, those are the two primary ways that weapons are used. There's a couple other traits that can come into play there, some of which you have to continue holding for them to do any damage at all. Others need a wind-up uh, time period before they actually start firing, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we wanna have a, lot, a bit of variety in how they use, but for semi-auto, no, I, I actually, I'm gonna just straight up correct myself there. I don't think we actually have any plans to include a semi-auto styled weapon. Um, but I do like that conceptually. I think that could work. Um, I'm just gonna think about that. I'm gonna let that churn in my mind space. So maybe, maybe we can talk about that. But first we need to address who has been the victor of the final Everspace 2 beta giveaway. Who has been victorious in claiming their reward for hanging out with us in the stream. We've got a congrats to Silri! Congrats to Silri. You have just earned yourself a copy of the Everspace 2 beta. This is going to transform into the early access and into the 1.0 release, so utilize it well. We do encourage you to provide lots and lots of delicious feedback through development. Utilize those Everspace 2 forums on Steam to do so. Now that you have a key, you have that special access right inside. Ooh, you get the super one. But uh, don't let that stop you if you don't have beta access. If you have been watching the streams, you've got a favorite streamer who's been poking about in the beta or in the alpha now into the beta. Also let us know your thoughts as well. Dive into those forums. We got a lot of healthy suggestions. There's some really powerful people in our community, um, even watching us right now. And um, yeah, just let us know. We wanna, we wanna make this the best it can possibly be. So your voice is important. Give us your voice. Cool. Neat, fantastic. Also, I saw an item. No, I didn't see an item. But we do have a better energy core. We have better sensors. We're gonna get those on right the heck now. That feels good. All right, delivery coordinates. Let's see what happens here. Then we're gonna transition to the community aspect side of the stream where we talk about some stuff that you guys have been up to. I, I really dig this coil gun. This is a good coil gun that we found fairly early. Are you the guys I am supposed to meet? You have the package? Yeah, here. Wow, thanks. <laughs> Just want to point out how crazy it is that I'm shooting this outlaw, spinning around him, and all of a sudden, zoom, these guys warp in, literally in my firing range. <laughs> this paint job will make us Excellent. finally stand out. Everyone will see that we're not like everyone else. I keep hearing that. Have fun with it. So, we just delivered this Viridium paint to some outlaws. I'm gonna attack. Time to head back to the trader. He's shooting at us. That trader set us up. Why 
not? We're breaking the missing chain. It's what you, what's it matter? We we just delivered it to him. We're gonna get our reward anyway. You know, that's how games work. We'll just take it from him after we gave it to him. We'll tell the the merchant that everything went swimmingly. What's the problem, right? Excellent. Down to the Mad Cat Pod. Perfect. Whoops! We got him too! We got him too! <laughs> the trader won't be very happy when I tell him that I just shot down his customers. Don't tell him that though. Come on, don't. Oh my goodness. Take the stuff. Man, we got some good stuff though. Dang, I'm happy with that. That makes me incredibly satisfied. Got a lot of stuff. Who'd possibly go wrong? Scrap. I need to tell him what happened. No, you don't. You don't tell him anything. Just, just say that everything was great. So obviously, what I'm alluding to here is that if you want to change what sort of happens in certain missions, you actually can. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna stop you. It's like the, all of these ships that are existing in space, like if you want to start shooting one down that you're not technically supposed to for a mission chain, well, you're gonna suffer the repercussions for that. So let's see what happens. Roll for lie. Hang on a second. I got you, fam. Roll for lie. All right, here we go. Okay, so I know that you can't see it on screen, but it's an 11. How'd I do? I don't know what the, I don't know what the check was. I need some, what was the check? And I don't know what my plus modifier is. Probably minus one for goofy streamer. Oh, success? Nailed it. Perfect, flawless victory. All right. Let's see what happens when we die. I'm afraid I ran into a bit of trouble. Trouble? I was talking with them when you started shooting. You are aware that I won't pay you anything now. Fair enough. But honestly, all I saw was a scout, two madcaps, a sniper drone, and an elite viper pilot. Yeah, they're a raggle taggle group. No reason to shoot at them. They're exactly the same as the guys you just made me fight. Exactly. No, there's a big difference. When the two viper pilots came back to order the paint, the first one just barged in, slammed his money on the counter and made his proposition. While the other one began by asking if it was okay for him to dock here. When I said yes, he thanked me. Can you believe that? That's, uh, amazing. Long story short, you may have just killed the last polite outlaw, but brutes like you will never understand. I am sorry. It's a start, I guess. Oops. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that took a turn for the oopsers. My gosh. Goodness gravy. So yeah, your decisions that you can freely choose to do at certain points in certain missions. Like, you can betray those that you are doing the job for. And again, you're gonna suffer those repercussions. Um, this isn't gonna be something that's super crazy elaborate too. Like this is, uh, this is an example. This is currently in the game. This will be staying. Um, we are going to have other situations that are like this. There's not some like super crazy deep, uh, like a uh, tree of dialogues, like option one, then option 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. And then it's just like, just from the first mission, you have 50 different outcomes. Don't think like that at all. Yes, we are using RPG systems and we want to give you a little bit of veritability and uh, variety in what you do. Um, just know that this isn't, we're, it's it's not like major crazy brings your past. Still, we want to give you control over these situations. And if you perform adamantly, you're gonna get paid. And if you're an ass, you're not. <laughs> Excellent. All right. 
We have like five minutes left in the stream, so we are going to cut over to our next little segment of Rockfish News, which is uh, primarily just showing uh, the different things um, you guys have posted in the Discord. Uh, we don't have any rich, super crazy fan art as of yet. Uh, nothing too wild, but if you want to get to the Discord, you can see it on the screen now, or rather it's cycling by. There's a lot of different ways that you can follow us. Discord.gg slash Rockfish Games is the place that you would go to find um, all of that varying information um, and all the, the conversations and, and everything. It's also where the giveaway literally just was. If you are the type who likes to drop in fan art, screenshots, and stuff like that, I really do encourage you to jump into the mix because we, we really do have a lot of fun there. It's, it's a really good time. So let's go ahead and start showing off a little bit of this uh, concept art. This one comes from two years ago, actually. It was requested. The guy, uh, his name is Blackheart6004. Um, and he was like, you need to show this picture that I took forever ago. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's a great shot. Like, it's, it's you know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, why from two years ago? I don't know, but still pretty neat. This actually is the, um, this is the multi-missile launcher. It's called the Seeker Missile Battery in Everspace One. You can see here, this is the Sentinel. This is the DLC ship that you can fly in Everspace One. And um, it's also very similar to the Sentinel in Everspace Two, much as you saw when we were going back through the game. So thanks for that shot, Blackheart. Uh, it's really good stuff. We also have some shots from Murky is his username. And we've got one, uh, I, I'm actually not sure if this is the prototype or if this is the alpha, maybe it's the beta. Um, but I think this is a really solid shot as well. Um, just about hitting that ship. Pretty sure he's using mouse actually, because <laughs> otherwise auto aim from controller would lock that into place. Uh, really nice dynamic angle though. Uh, really looking forward to more of your shots because I'm digging it. I'm already digging it. I think it's looking great. We got another shot right here as well. I'm um, using some of the effects of the uh, photo mode, uh, which I neglected to show you in game. What, what am I thinking? That would have been a great transition, wouldn't it have? Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, we have a pretty elaborate photo mode to give you a lot of control uh, taking the shots that you want. That is just, I hope that you have an energized boost ramming speed modifier like I do, because otherwise this doesn't look like it's gonna end too well for you. Uh, but very, very clean shots, very great looking. Then we got a jillion screenshots from BL Lambricht in the Discord as well. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna go through quite a bit. These do stem from Everspace 2. Um, lots of shots coming from you. Uh, so we're gonna cycle through them. And as I'm cycling through these, I want you guys to ask me some questions about any of the content that you saw, um, anything, uh, any anything really. But let's try to keep the focus on Everspace too. Uh, let's not get weird, okay? <laughs> Everspace two stuff um, as we're cycling through these shots. Uh, wait a second, that's not, that went to the wrong shot. Hang on a second, hang on. Let me Let me adjust this accordingly. I'm gonna back out of that make sure that my shots are all cleared. There we go, that should be better. What is this tomfoolery? We'll just keep going. I think I accidentally copied that over, copy pasted it. Uh, no worries. All right, here we go. Here we go, some more shots from him. Um, and we'll cycle through, all right. Questions. Dump fire missile. Yeah, we have a, uh, we're pretty happy with how uh, the missiles are moving into Everspace 2. Uh, you haven't seen the end of the secondaries, of course. There are a lot more to come. Missile with wings in space with no air. Sky high. Well, you know what? There's sound in the game. That doesn't make any sense. And frankly, those little lateral thrusters shouldn't be able to move the ship around like that either. And the cockpit space isn't suitable for actual spaceship flying. And, you know, oh my gosh, like, you wouldn't hear music in space. Uh, uh, it's so unrealistic. This, it's, it's not like it's a video game. Like, this is a real world, real life situ simulation of space and everything. I can't believe how just, ugh, it just disgusts me, right? Oh my God, look at this. That's not realistic at all. 
<laughs> Don't worry, okay? We want to make sure that the game is fun and functional. So we're going to make sure it has sound effects and pretty graphics and unrealistic the portrayals of space. Because if we made real space in this game, guess what? You're going to be flying around a lot of empty for a lot of time. And we simply wanted to give you things to actually do. So sorry, that's on us. But uh, that's our take on it. I hope that you'll you understand our, our portrayal of space and bringing you actual content to engage with. <laughs> actually, I really like this shot, actually. This is, this is pretty neat. Uh, somebody in Discord commented that it kind of looks like a water effect. That's the shield breaking. That's the shield breaking. Yeah, you can catch the shield actually dissolving from your opponent once you break it. Um, there's a full animation for it. Pretty neat. And that's the destruction of his playership. That, that stinks. We'll keep going through these. Another missile with wings and space. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Sky High, I love you, by the way. All right. It's great. Solid question. All right, Eric, do the consumables now activate immediately when pressed? Uh, they do not in this version, Spectral Badger. Um, know that we are addressing concerns regarding consumables and we'll have more to talk about in the future. Will there be ships with player controlled turrets? Yes, I can, I can say yes. I can say yes to that. What's my point of view nose cam? Um, Joseph, we actually, um, I hope that you saw the, um, the Kickstarter update with that. We actually did that. Marco had a lot of fun putting that together. Um, but there, there is legitimately a point of view with the nose. <laughs> it was great, it was a lot of fun. I, I like this shot too. This almost looks like a space station. It's just a drone. But uh, I do like the way that it, it the, the stylistic approach that we are utilizing the game um, comes together pretty well. Shows you a lot more detail than whatever was in Everspace 1. Um, all these models are fresh. They're new, by the way. We're not taking the assets of Everspace 1 and then just tweaking them. They're all new models. They're all new models. So we're happy with how that's coming along. Uh, let's see. The goo gun, is it there? So the goo gun hasn't quite been um, a, a point of topic even for us. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's definitely something that could come back. We'll have to see what time allows and uh, everything else that we're planning that I may or may not be able to speak about. What's the gameplay aspect you're most proud of? Um, holy cow, Chrysant, what a question. There are a lot of nuances that shape and change everything in Everspace 2 in comparison to what was possible in Everspace 1. Um, I think what I really appreciate the most, but we haven't, we haven't fully pursued, we haven't unlocked its full potential yet, is the grapple mechanic. There's so many opportunities, so many gameplay aspects that can come out of that one simple tool that I'm so excited to show you that we've been working on. Like seriously, there's some sick stuff behind the scenes um, that's just not ready yet. And it really defines Everspace 2 in the whole space genre because frankly, there's no other freaking space game that lets you do that. There just isn't. <laughs> and it's, it's a nice change. Like you can grab a piece of debris, use it as a shield, throw it into your opponent, watch them go spinning because of physics and laugh at the situation <laughs> because it's hilarious and it's fun. Like it just, it feels good. And there's more, there's, there's more to it. There's more to it than just that. Um, in addition, I'm really proud of how we've incorporated the modular approach to the ships. Um, because as a whole, that's all the that's all the photos, by the way. So thank you for that wide assortment of shots, B.W. Lambrecht. Um, seriously, like we we are really, really happy, really proud of how the modular approach is coming along with the ships. Um, just cycling through the tier one Sentinel alone should give you a pretty strong sense of how uh, how much diversity is in just a single ship, and that did not include all of the customization. We've hinted at, we've even shown you some blockouts of customizing the interior of the cockpit as well. And we are still working on more customization things that um, aren't ready to talk about. And if I keep talking, somebody will slap me across the face. Uh, let's see. 
We are actually over time in the stream. I always do this every time because I love you and I don't want to leave. Um, let's answer like another another question. Um, one more, two more questions and we'll go. Are there blueprints for ships too? Blueprints have not been implemented yet. Blueprints have been a point of discussion. Um, I think if we were to do blueprints, that would be uh, maybe a conversation regarding crafting and stuff like that. Um, so that is a topic for another day. Uh, just know that we did have blueprints and crafting in the first game. So there's, I would say, a, a pretty decent chance that that's going to be something we revisit or at least talk about uh, for the uh, coming iterations of Everspace 2. Grapple gun, space ninja, rope worms. Interesting. All right. I like it. Yeah, throwing rocks is also fun. Like grappling a small asteroid, a little piece of debris, a drone, grabbing a drone, other things. Mm, ah, can't wait to show you. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Let's see. I have a whole year to convince the importance of whippers and the dangers of space slugs impacting the screen. You mean wipers? You talking like like wipers for the cockpit? <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see. If you were on Twitch and had a sub button, I would instantly sub to you. Well, that's appreciated. We, we don't actually stream to Twitch for the subs. We stream to Twitch because we want to engage with our community. We want to make sure that you guys know what's going on. And if you do have questions and comments, we want to share like in person with you so that you know how things are going so we can have a conversation. That's the point of the stream. So I do appreciate that. Um, the biggest support you can give us is uh, really engaging with us in our communities. It's giving us feedback. And when the early access drops, it's participating in that. And I don't just mean throwing money at us and then being silent. I'm, I mean, like truly diving in to the, the streams, uh, going to the forums, embracing people in the Discord, commenting on Reddit, posting links in Reddit, uh, doing something fun that's reminiscent of, of how you uh, embrace Everspace too. Maybe you have a hobby, maybe you like crafting. You craft something, you take a photo of it, share it in our Discord. Like that's the best thing that you can possibly do for us because the more support and the more love that we get, the more support and love we can give back. So that's solid. Awesome change to see passionate devs, uh, community manager, a lot of scripted fake stuff everywhere else in the industry. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's all part of the job. Um, it's you know, man, whew, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. So I have to be really, you know, I'm, I'm tiptoeing here. You can all tell. Uh, yeah, like we we prefer the more authentic, just play it as we go. That's why you see these random bugs too during the streams. Um, I will fully admit, and just like Michael can vouch for this, I got in trouble for showing too many bugs in previous streams because we do need to have some semblance of direction according to these things. Um, and you know, but still at the, at the end of the day, we want you to experience what we're experiencing as well. Like we want to be real and the best way to be real is just by going at it. So thank you for trugging through this, this mess with us as well. Uh, some things are much more, <laughs> much more, uh, dismantled than others, but you can also see that we've made incredible progress. We have made huge strides and we are pushing a lot of this narrative in the direction that we desire it to go. We're pulling in a lot of the feedback that you guys have supplied and your suggestions are starting to show up in the game as well. So if that doesn't show you how invested we are with the community, man, I, I don't even know what else to say. So thank you for your appreciation, truly. It really does mean a lot. Gonna try and give proper constructive feedback. Boom, excellent. Champion right there. Thank you. Really do appreciate it. And congrats on winning. That's solid stuff. Okay, guys, I am talking way too much now. I actually have to go. My wife is like, you need to take care of your children. What are you doing? So I'm going to do that. Um, but seriously, you guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. And I will catch you in all of these social sites and everything where we can continue the conversation, ask the questions that possibly we missed through the course of this stream. Don't be shy, get on in there. There's an Ask Questions channel. We will make sure that your voice is loud and heard. Also, I forgot to do one other very important thing and that's saying goodbye. And I always do it in the same capacity. So toodles.
have received word that four Arca forces are inbound to our sector. I repeat, four Arca. 